Okay, we have uh, under old business, uh, selectman's calendar. Uh, scheduled for next meeting uh, is the review of the warrant articles for the annual town meeting. Uh, that's the one where the warrant committee will uh, take charge. Uh, and each of the, uh, the boards and commissions that will be here. Uh, we also have the selectmen assign the town election warrant yep. and to meet with the Council of Aging on the proposed building. Well, we've just kind of done that. We, yep. are we, can, you want to still bring them in? No. No, I don't think no, we I think we, we can kind of did that. Yeah, did that. I think we're okay. So we can probably take that out. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, there was just two items that um, at some point uh, before the end of March, I'd like to see, um, let me get my notes here. I still have to get the specs out on the uh, cell tower to mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the cell tower, yeah. yeah. If we could get um, the Columbia Gas uh, representative. And, and then the other issue is, I think we've been incredibly patient uh, with the utilities, but those telephone poles remain on Green Street. If we can get, maybe ask the Verizon representative to come in and see why do we have such a delay? I mean, this really has been they, since November. Yeah, I'll check with Ken. They have been out there a couple of times. They did start work, uh, and then there was storms that came along yeah. and had a lot of tree damage. So I could understand for this particular time. Well, Some of the crews get pulled away. Get pulled away. Yeah, yeah, but this but has been I, going I'll, on since November. I'll, I'll check with Ken and, and see if he can get them out there again, because I know they were out there, and they did put a priority on it. But if not, we'll get them to come in. Great. Thank you. Anyone, uh, either uh, Pete or Mark, anything else you want for next? Uh, no, that's fine. No. Okay. It'll, it'll be a busy, busy meeting. meeting. Yeah, it'll be a lot with the uh, warrant here. Um, okay, Mike. I've been trying to get some stuff ready for the warrant committee in terms of budgets. They're about a million dollars over where they want to be. And I've been coming up with some suggestions for them. I will email those out to you so we, you people will at least have had a chance to take a look at it. Some of me are not going to like. Some of you, you will. Uh, one of the problems is 90% um, of the, uh, the appropriations are, the, are in the operating budget. There yeah. isn't a lot in the articles. Yeah. And a lot of it is what we just talked about tonight, the master plan, the capital plan, the yeah. hospital master plan, the hospital maintenance, uh, traffic lights, uh, yeah. the downtown study projects. And uh, you don't have a lot to cut. Yeah. So um, when you see it, keep in mind that these are just suggestions. And, okay. Uh, but if you do want to, and, and the goal of the Warren Committee has been to try to restrict the use of free cash to no more than 500000 to start building up free cash to, uh, because now your school building assistance money is going down. And in order to maintain that 5 to 10 percent yeah. operating, uh, uh, combination of uh, either free cash or stabilization that the bonding agencies want. Uh, they feel that you need to start yep. building up your free cash or stabilization funds. Okay. So, so um, you'll email that and that you, you're going to report as well at that meeting, correct, on the finances? Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a request to approve the February 2nd uh, minutes. Any uh, Changes or corrections? So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Uh, same with the February 16th. Any changes or correction on that? Nope. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. And uh, the February 23rd uh, minutes? Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, we have to vote to sign the warrant for the March 28th annual town election. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. And is that? That's there, yeah. It's this one. It's like eight or ten copies of that, yeah. Well, I'm going to have our inside. That's right. Okay. We have uh, the selectman. This is baffling to me. The selectman requests to vote a <laughs> snow emergency. It doesn't seem ironic, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> we're, we're working on that. It's probably a good idea to hold off on that until the next. Okay. Week. But um, there were, it appears there were a lot of repairs, equipment repairs. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it was uh, 135,000 equipment repairs, was it? Uh, close to 150. 150. Oh. So it's not, it's not the issue of plowing the snow that we haven't had? No, it's, a, it's equipment okay. repair and service. 
So how does that end up under the snow budget then? Uh, that's what they would charge. They, they, uh, Snow yeah, it's a it's a line item within the snow budget yeah. to to repair uh, the, the equipment, plows. the snow budget. Well, the snow was very heavy. We did have a very that that heavy. Mm -hmm. we, we, had, yeah, really we had yeah, we had quite a bit of tree damage too. So they did. So this is all equipment that would be related to plowing of snow. Yeah. Well, well that's what we're we're going through okay. item by item. So you can back sure on the March fifteenth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll hold on that. Oh, can I just? I mean, you, sure. you were asking about things for other meetings. Should we have that woman from uh, the Mass Housing Authority in at one of our March meetings? I'm um, sure. Um, well, the fifteenth would be. It would have to be the twenty um, second. We have re oh, we're signing the uh, articles. Which selectmen are going to speak on which? There's actually not a lot there than announcing about the election. Evelyn had something she wanted. Yeah, the twenty yeah. second MAPC is coming in to give you, you know, the rundown uh, oh, well, of the downtown down summit. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's right. Well, that'd be very important. Yeah. We don't want to. Right. Anytime. And then also yeah. the. Uh, ABCC here. Yeah. Uh, um, the new why don't you, restaurant. Why don't you, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't oh, you uh, hold the discussion until the first meeting after a town meeting? Yeah. How about the April 5th meeting? I like that one. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, we can invite. The uh, housing authority. I'm forgetting her name. Uh, the director. Candace. Candace. Candace, right. Bowen, L O E W E N. Uh, might as well. I would probably, it would be proper to invite the entire um, uh, the House of Authority. Uh, House of Authority. Oh, yeah. They're the ones in charge. Yeah, the first Unless if I don't, my sister would yell at me. It <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. No, it would not. <laughs> Definitely would not be. Um, <clears throat> Oh, we have a vote to appoint uh, Laurie. Um, is that Laurie Maganello? I don't know. For the Memorial Day committee? Is that? Oh, I don't know. Evelyn would uh, know. I'm sorry. We were, we, were, we were just chuckling that we're scheduling meetings when you're not going to be on the board. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is that uh, Evelyn? Uh, is that her married name? Laurie. Is that Laurie Maganello? Oh, I don't know. Al Maganello's uh, daughter? I don't know. That, oh. This came from Michelle Doucet. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, if it isn't, I apologize. No. Uh, um, so, so moved. Oh, Pete, Second. did you want to uh, wait uh, with your issue of waiting to see if anybody else wants to go? Are you okay with that? I'm fine with it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. And also to appoint uh, as an associate member, Douglas Tierney, uh, who member. is uh, an associate member, as a full member of the Medfield Historical Commission. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. The um, Midfield High School girls field hockey team is requesting permission to hold a fundraising car wash while well, they're really planning here. Uh, behind Town Hall on Saturday, September the 10th. So moved, yeah. Second. Maybe that's why they're trying to get the water in. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, a question on the left. Let me just first, all, all in favor? Yep. Aye. I'm sorry, Micah. On the historical uh, commission. When I was put in the warrant together, I prepared uh, an article. Um, oh no, it, it, it's uh, it, it's actually on the uh, yeah. It, it was on the article. For, excuse me. It's the article for the demolition um, uh, uh, The appeal process. Cultural committee. Oh. And I had it down as as you were submitting it uh, for the for the grant it was uh, as as the board of is the cultural committee, yeah. And and um, I got some revisions, and it, they said it was being sponsored by the board of selectmen. Uh, oh no, it was the historic the change to the historic district where you have the hearing. Yeah. And and I put it in his historical commission and board of selectmen. Yeah, they crossed it out and put just board of selectmen. I thought it should be put in by both because it really is. I, actually, I would think we'd just be uh, the historical commission. Yeah, I, I think I think they asked you to vote to support it. Yeah, but it, it, uh, it, it, at least if anything, it's a joint thing. It's a, they, cause they, you know. Yes. Yeah. They were objecting to it. No, no they they well, just wanted they crossed it out and put board of selectmen. I, I think it should be a joint thing as well. I don't know. At least, yeah, joint. Yeah, because it's there. Yeah, I thought, do you just want it just historical or both?
I would have a, I would have a joint because I think I thought we had a, a good uh, we, I think we had a good conversation about that. We all jointly we all jointly agreed. And, and in and the end, it comes down out. to the selectmen making that decision. We right. appoint them as a board. So I, I suggest would be you would be both. But how yeah, that's you that's be? fine. I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, selectmen report. Uh, not too, too much other than the fact that first Thursday is coming up again this week. I wonder what the temperature is going to be, whether we get out on the roof deck for Zulu Gallery or not. But anyways, there's always hope yeah. the better weather and stuff. And uh, Michael, you're uh, speaking, I think, tomorrow night at our Lions Club meeting. Yes. Yeah. 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 The State of the good. Union Address. Yeah, so that'll, that'll be good. Looking forward to that. We'll have to see what the State of the Union is after tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's true. That's true. Just watching that here. The so, election will be over tonight. Yeah. It's over now. Yeah. Well, they said I didn't really have too much. No. I, I've been going to the State Hospital Master Planning Committee meetings. They, uh, as, as uh, Steve mentioned, they've, they've hired this extra consultant, Consensus Building Institute, or Consensus, yeah, I think that's what the name is. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Suskind's uh, group, and uh, it, it sounds like they're going to add a fair amount of value, so I think that was a good choice. Uh, and I thought that, Mark, that you were quite good in telling them that they shouldn't be worried about an extra expense yes. because they're putting in so much time and effort and that they really deserve to get the support from, from another Yeah, I mean, consultant. they're all getting worried that it was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're killing themselves. And they were angsting over spending the town's money on, uh, on something. So. Whatever, 60, not even $16,000 in this game. Um, the Metro Cares About Protection met this morning, uh, first meeting of the year, and uh, they've hired a consultant, uh, a woman who's run uh, substance abuse programs for decades, I guess, in Revere. She seemed very knowledgeable. Um, and so I think that, that uh, more things are going to happen there, although one of the discussions that came out of that was that there really should be a town staff person um, split between the schools and the uh, and the town maybe a half-time person to start so that might be coming in a year's time what else do you want to cut to get down the million dollars if you want to hire a new person that's, a, that's um, the problem with all these things you know they get community development block grants in these cities and they have federal funds to do right. it and they get money from the yep. state we don't get that. We have to pay for all these things ourselves. So yeah, well, it makes it very difficult. And it's a, and it'll be it'll be a dis discussion amongst the town residents, I guess, as part of the budget process as to whether or not they want to focus on preventing substance abuse and, and, and which is really to keep the kids safe. Um, yeah. And it's mainly the kids that they, that they it's, I, I that find it very, focused it, on. It very interesting when everybody's talking about preventing substance abuse and at the same time they're talking about legalizing recreation use of marijuana. Yeah, well that's... It a, seems that's, kind of it's inconsistent. It's not always consistent, but, is it? Yeah. Um, I mean, the part of the genesis of this is that the uh, Metro West Adolescent Health Survey results are, are getting released. Um, the high school has, uh, Sue Cowell has uh, done a, uh, a presentation that, that uh, has been shared already. Uh, gonna, there's gonna be a presentation to the parents on March 9th at the high school auditorium at 6.30. And after that, they're gonna put the whole study up on, on the, on the uh, internet f for the first time, um, which is very good, because uh, this is a lot of data about the kids in Medfield from sixth through 12th grades, I think, take this every other year. The results are, are uh, very accurate because it's all anonymous. And so that they say that they, I guess Sue said that they, they, they tossed out maybe 20 um, responses out of whatever that, that would be like 1,200, 1,400 responses, I guess, from that number of grades. Um, and, and the highlight, I guess, from it is the amount of stress that the kids are feeling, uh, huge amount of stress, uh, and that uh, there are a lot of mental health issues. Kids are feeling suicidal, um, and it's not just one or two. It's, it's tens. It's, it's lots of kids. Uh, so, it's, you know, the town will have to make a decision as to whether they think that that's a, a priority for the town government to get involved with or not. Uh, yeah, well, now, is the, the chief on that also, right, because I know he's been talking yeah. about wanting to put a policeman uh, resource officer. Yep, the superintendent in. mentioned that too, that he thought that, the, that having a school resource officer was an essential thing. You go on and on with these things, and if you had the money, it would be probably good things to do, but you can only do so much. 
with the resources we have. It's just tough. Yeah. Well, it's a, anytime you spend money in a in a in a town government, it's a it's a choices. Yeah. Do you have a teacher? Do you have a, a substance abuse person, or do you have a DPW person? Or, I mean, you have to. You can't have everything, as you say. Um, so, um, uh, I went to the Pac 200 Blue and Gold Banquet, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, did they have a great magician who uh, just was excellent. Uh, um, Although they, they unfortunately served the cake in the middle of his performance and all oh, the kids they got yeah, up yeah, and yeah, yeah, went yeah. to get cake. <laughs> and the, the poor man was standing there. He could make it disappear. <laughs> he kept standing there. He was very excellent. He hey, just, he yeah. boy, did I wish I, uh, that I had the ability to, to talk the way he did nonstop. Um, and he kept the kids so entertained and they were just really engaged. Uh, but I guess what I really wanted to mention about that is Jim Hatch has been the cub master of that pack for uh, several years now, and he's just done an excellent job. Uh, clearly, the, the meetings run so well, or at least these blue and gold banquets that I've been to, uh, and, and the, the parents are involved, um, the kids seem to be very orderly, the part that, that we saw. Um, and the good news, uh, well, he's retiring, which is the bad news for the pack because his son is, is aging out into Boy Scouts. And the good news is that he's going to become the, the uh, troop leader, I think, of, uh, I don't know whether it's 89 or the other one, 10. Uh, but I think it's 89. Uh, and, and Bruce Rain is going to uh, gonna retire as the, as the troop leader. Uh, I went to the Mass Municipal Association uh, legislative breakfast last Friday, and that turned out to be a very interesting thing. I'll just run down very quickly the uh, John Robertson, who's the le is he the legislative person for the MMA, yeah. Yeah. gave a report, and uh, income tax rate went down on January 1. It's expected to go down uh, on January of next year, too. Um, the governor is doing revenue sharing, but as Mike pointed out, it's only the revenue sharing on that unlimited g general government assistance, which is a very, and, and that, he said, is still below the pre- recession levels from 2007, 2008. So we still haven't gotten back up to the, the right. monies that we got before the Great Recession. Right. I Chapter did a quick, 70 yeah. the, is historic low increase. So that the, the governor, unfortunately, uh, is not, and I think that uh, Representative Linsky said that the, the increase there is 1.6 to 1.7 percent mm -hmm. increase. So that, uh, and Linsky thought that the money should for suburban towns, it would be better if the money goes into full day pre-K or kindergarten and sped circuit breaker. Uh, I don't understand enough about the yeah. school financing to understand well, why that's so. In, in fairness to the governor, if the legislature passes his municipal assistance package, that would go a long way to make up for the money he didn't put in. If they would relieve us of some of these mandates, that's as good as giving you, giving you extra money. But the, uh, I did a quick calculation on our chapter, on our cherry sheet this year, and uh, the governor announced he was upping uh, local aid by 4.3%. And now he did on the uh, uh, un unrestricted local aid. But if you take the total cherry sheet, um, it went up 1.4% because most of our cherry sheet aid, about 80% of it or more, is for Chapter 70 Central school aid. School aid yeah. And that only went up $25 for a student, I believe it was. Representative Alice Pleisch spoke about the Chapter 70 issues. She's apparently chair of the Education Committee in the House, and, uh, and, and I come nowhere near understanding the formulas for education funding. And, uh, <laughs> and so I didn't understand a lot of what she said, but the, basically she said that the the whole formula has been getting killed by the fact that the health care costs have gone up so much faster than they were projected to go up, and and that they I think the number she said was like 14 billion to implement the costs or something. Uh, and she said it's potentially difficult to make any changes because you can't make you can't ask towns to cut, and some towns would get cut, so you have to you have a, a floor now, and, and and that you have to deal with. Uh, I, th I think over half the state budget now is, is uh, health and welfare. Mm -hmm. um, Chapter 90, which is the roads, uh, John Robertson said uh, uh, it's an annual event this year. Unfortunately, the MMA is wanting it to be a multi-year bond bill. Um, 
also the governor went back down to the 200 million. He made a big show about releasing the extra 100 million last year that uh, Governor Deval Patrick had withheld. It had been a, two, a $300 million legislative um, budget item, and Go Governor Patrick said, I'm not going to release 100 million of that unless you enact some reforms to save money, and they didn't do it, so he didn't spend uh, 100 million. The minute uh, Governor Baker got there, before he took off his coat, he said he released the 100 million. We all went, yay, but now he's not giving us the extra 100 million this year, so we're back down to 200 million. Uh, Public records, I got a, a much better understanding of that. Um, the, the House bill is what we want as a municipality, and that was passed unanimously by the House. Um, the Senate bill has added uh, uh, more aggressive time requirements to the municipalities to respond to re record requests. Uh, fees are too limited, uh, and, and, and as they pointed out, you can even get commercial requesters coming in, uh, and that the enforcements uh, it is difficult because there are attorneys' fees and costs that could cost the. Is that in a joint committee now? It's in a conference committee, yeah. Yeah, I, I know we were getting, every once in a while we'll get a request mm -hmm. from a California mortgage uh, banker, mortgage yeah, firm. Yeah, it's not like Joe that, Blow the, from the corner coming in. That wants information on our residents, and I don't want to give it out, first of all. And secondly, you know, they're not doing it for the good of the public. They're doing it because they're trying to drum up business, yeah. which people yeah. don't want to be called. They don't want all these junk mail. Yeah. And if they put that in there, the other thing they, they were talking about was putting criminal sanctions. Right. And as I said to him, perhaps, if you're going to put criminal sanctions for violation of the open meeting law, you ain't going to have a public official in this state. Uh, you know, why would anybody put their financial lives at risk for a volunteer committee where you get paid nothing or peanuts yeah. to uh and then have a have a risk getting criminal sanction where you could lose your house your career your, everything on on the municipal modernization bill uh, that's now been broken into five separate parts to go through uh, different house committees and and uh, and they said that that was a good idea to break it into five parts uh, and they focused on liquor licenses, which I don't think are an issue for us. The number of liquor licenses, that's an issue for some towns, I guess. Uh, and the, but the city uh, civil service reform, which I think is an issue for us. The economic development bill, I understood that was like 500 million with mass works bonds. Um, and uh, so I guess, I mean, that could be some money for something like the state hospital. Then they talked about the environmental stuff, the these MS4, which I don't know, that's the stormwater permits. They say that those are coming from the federal government in March. Yeah, in March. Yeah, I, uh, I found the 252 conditions that they wanted uh, subjects, mm -hmm. which they wanted you to address yeah. in your application. I'll send you copies of them. It's oh, I don't care. No, thank you. Um, I mean, my concern, Mike, was that, that we heard from the uh, Neponset River watershed people that all these other towns are planning on an, a million dollar a year expense to comply with it. And because I'm very happy have, to hear that we- They haven't done anything. Yeah, and I'm very happy to hear that we're not gonna have that kind of expense. Yeah. So that's, Kansas, I guess that's my main job. concern that, uh, that it's not a budget item for us. So I'm very pleased. Uh, the solar, they, they were talking about the net median and the SREX, that that's in conference committee too. And but. One of the people positioned it as really a jobs bill. It was one of the uh, state reps, Carmen Chemska, I think was his name. And he said, it basically, you know, in his district, it's a, it's a jobs issue. All these people now are in the solar in industry. They're, I think he said there are 15,000 in the state that work in the solar industry now. And, and they, that's all going to go away if, if they don't do something. Yeah, there, we were, the, the permanent building committee and Andrew have been talking about holding up on putting solar panels on the public safety building right. because without the SREC credits, it, the payback period is a lot longer. It's a lot, yeah. It so, went from like, a, I don't remember what it was, was it five or six out to I 16 think it was like, or something? Yeah, about six, yeah, five or six years without it, and it was like two years with it. So. Yeah. Um, and then they talked about opiates and the best practices and that, and that the MMA has come up with a, uh, a, a white paper on opiates and what towns should be doing. They've got a 10 point best practices uh, guide, which we probably should look at. Um, we're doing a lot of it already. I mean, they've got the uh, drug drop off at the police station, the uh, uh, e. I think the thing that we really should be doing is, is designating a municipal employee as the point person on it. 
and other than that. I wonder if Don Alcott is doing a lot of that. She right is now. doing certainly a lot of it. She would be the person that I would think of as, as being the yeah. point person. Yeah. Um, um, Maybe if you sent that over to her, I bet you she's doing a lot of it. I sent it to her today, actually. Okay. Uh, I sent it to all the people on the MCAP uh, because of the discussion that we had this morning about substance abuse and prevention. And, and there's, well, it's another issue there with, with Don is that I think that it would make sense to have some sort of youth commission that, that, that the Medfield Youth Outreach could report to. Because um, they're a little different than the, than the, they're under the Board of Health technically. Right. And the, but we have over the years, we've had a number of different uh, yeah, the board advisory. Of, the Board of Health would like that too. They don't feel competent to direct the outreach worker. They would like to set up a committee. So I talked to the schools about it. They seem to agree about it. And police, uh, you know, if you put somebody from school, somebody from police, if Board of Health wanted to have somebody on, uh, you know, maybe somebody from the uh, social agencies in town. Yeah, and then a resident or something. Sense and have them. Yeah, we've actually had, yeah. over the years, we've had a youth advisory commission and a youth commission that dealt with it, and the Don Alcott was on that. Yeah, but they never really directed Don. This would be a committee to oh, sort of oversee, to her, oversee her. her. And yeah, and she'd report to them. She'd give them information about, mm -hmm. you know, what types of cases she was dealing with and uh, keep them informed of what's going on. So could we maybe uh, uh, call together the people that you think sure. should, should be part of it and maybe s yeah. try to figure out what's the likely, the best way to go? Maybe also first check with Don Alcott to her views on that. We did, you know, I've, I've talked to her about this in the past and she was agreeable with it. She thought it would be a good idea. Let's see, toll equity. I mean, that's not an issue for us, but out, out along the Mass Turnpike, they're very upset about that. Um, uh, what equity? Toll equity. <laughs> toll. It's the first time I'd ever heard of it too. <laughs> um, and they talked about the Complete Streets program. I don't know anything about that, so I thought I should get, look into that. Uh, Complete Streets is, I, I believe, the governor has put money in the budget or something, yeah. $2 million. Uh, Ken, Sarah, and the police chief were, were working on that. Yeah. And, it's, and, but it's uh, you have to put bike paths that meet the state standards, and you have to have uh, ADA-compliant sidewalks, and you're supposed to have a, a – it's, it's supposed to make streets – uh, safe for all uses, uh, bicycles, wheelchairs, cars, pedestrians. The idea is to try to incorporate it and one of the problems as Ken pointed out with the North Street project is is by the time you do all the things that you're required to do, <laughs> you get like, yes, you got like two 12 foot lanes for cars. Um, but it's going to be in the cars. Yeah, I know, really, yeah. 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 But I guess, no one's really into <laughs> the cars anymore. You know? yeah. I guess is, what I was wondering is if there was money attached to it. I mean, if there's, if there's if some money. There is, it but might be worth probably with the things they require you to do, it's oh, not worth it's, taking it's the money. It's not worth doing? Okay. But we're looking at it. Jeff, we're saying, do we know where, where we are with the uh, um, timeline as far as if you heard on the last week? Ken and I are meeting with Roland on Friday afternoon at one o'clock to go over that. If any of you are around and you want to sit down on that, it's going to be down the town garage at one o'clock. And that's North Street, did you say? Yeah. Friday. When well, we it's North Street. It's West Street. It's yeah. uh, Phillips Street. You know, we're going to talk about all those things. Yeah. How about Green Street? When's that going to? That's the poles are still there, aren't they? That's what I'm going to talk to you know oh, Ken okay. about yeah. it. They, as I said, they were out. They were doing a pretty good job, but then they had these storms and they had to divert away. So, but we'll see if we can get them going on it again. Somebody mentioned that the, if you want your bill to get passed this legislative season or session, this two-year session, it has to be reported out of committee by March 15. That was one of those things I'd never heard of before. And the final thing they mentioned, which is, I guess, sort of unique to Framingham and some of the other towns up there, is that people are, big supermarket chains are coming in and renting supermarket slots in, in uh, commercial districts. Right next to the Krista McAuliffe Library, there's an empty supermarket space. 
because some supermarkets trying to keep other supermarkets out, so they end up with these empty spaces that that the supermarkets are just paying for, and they're trying to. So it's been like that for about uh, actually close to 20 years now. Yeah, and they said there's <coughs> Southboro has some of it too. They mm -hmm. said, and uh, the Kristen McAuliffe Library, by the way, is gorgeous. It's brand new. It's uh, if you ever get a chance, you should go and take a look. It's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Really. And it's, 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 it's off of Edge Hill Road on the north side of town. Is it the towns or from the state? It's the towns, I think. It's the towns. They had a, a very small branch called the Krista McAuliffe Library, and then they decided to fund a larger branch um, right across one of the elementary schools. It looks like a rocket. It does. <laughs> it's metal very on nice. the outside. It's very fascinating. Uh, and that's everything, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just need uh, some uh, guidance. The um, Warren Committee um, Representative Barbara Gibbs has been after me because uh, she's trying to um, get the item uh, recommended before the Warren Committee, and that's on the downtown. We have uh, originally we had twenty-five thousand dollars. A little over five thousand will be going to the improvements at Straw Hat Park. Uh, my um, my wish, but that's just one of, of three members here, uh, was one. We're waiting for. I was waiting for some of the results from the downtown study committee in talking with Sarah. We're not going to be able to probably get those results until late into March, and the Warren Committee is looking to take some action. So, I mean, my own, uh, I, I did kind of a survey. I'd like to see some of that money used for plenty of trees downtown, both on public and private uh, properties, and continuing the uh, brick sidewalk where it ends. It just makes the bend by Meeting House Pond down along um, the length of the pond. Uh, and that was one of the recommendations that the um, 2007 um, Downtown Study Committee vision uh, uh, plan had. It's also, uh, as far as the brick sidewalks there, it was the recommendation of the Aesthetics uh, and Sidewalk Committee of the, the zones of the, the brick sidewalk. So that's two suggestions I had without looking at the results which we don't have yet from downtown studies. So I, mean, I mean, they're looking for us to allocate the money ahead of time? They're looking to what we're going to spend it for. Well, I, I thought the whole point of us having the small little fund was that as things come up during the year and someone needed 500 bucks for something, we could do it without taking an act of Congress to give someone 500 bucks. That's the whole purpose of having a little account. I mean, it's only, what, 25 grand? I mean, it's if they're all worked up actually. over that, then cut it. I mean, you know, really. I mean, jeez. If they, they're so worked up over 25 grand that it's actually we're, like 20. It, yeah, it's yeah, so. yeah, that we're going to somehow waste it. You know, well, I, uh, I mean, jeez. I mean, I, I had some ideas, but I mean, I, I haven't got any prices no. or anything. No, and, and, and things come up as it goes along. As jeez. I said, you're not going to like my list of costs. I was just going to say that. <laughs> so this is the first one. So we I don't even want to get upset. Don't get upset. We've already taken it. That's the way that I want the $120,000 that the meal tax contributes. Why don't we do away with that? Because it's not, I'm asking for, or we <laughs> are asking for 25. We are giving an additional over $100,000 into the town, which we wouldn't have if we didn't have that meal tax. Damn it. Well, if you want to go back and cut more out of the operating budgets, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still, I think, 340000 above target where they want to be. It's a ridiculous short to try to, no matter what you cut, someone's going to be not happy. I know. This yes. goes. Yeah. There's never enough money, obviously, to go around. And everything's always good. I mean, everyone always has good intentions, everything. No, that's what's People good about a democracy town meeting gets to decide. Yeah. Pete, did you have any ideas on the... Uh, how to spend yeah, the money? Uh, I think that, no, I, I didn't money. really. I, I thought that Mike's idea was a good one of putting a, a little pocket park in front of, uh, across from Zebras, in front of Larkins and North Street Market, filling in those spaces, the the, uh, the head-in spaces. I think that's a, that's not a, that's well, kind of a dangerous... You have a battle on that, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think you'd have to get over the battle to, to do that before you... I think some of the local business people will fight you. I think it's a battle worth fighting. I think it's you a know. it's a it's a bad traffic setup. So it's a horrible traffic setup. Yeah, but although I'm advised here that the reason some of the people don't want to do away with it is they don't like to parallel park. Oh they sure, would. I mean a lot of people yeah, can't parallel park. A lot of people can't parallel park. I am taking park. him out no, of our club. Won't. <laughs> so you have to buy a new car that parks itself then. I am removing <laughs> Michael from my club. <laughs> no, some, yeah, some people won't. Yeah, won't come. Yeah. 
Well, uh, I, I, I will relay um, that part of that will be as things come up during the year. Um, I don't know if you like my ideas of the trees or... I like your idea of the sidewalk and the trees. Yes. yes, sure. Yeah. Okay. Both of those are great ideas. Now, the sidewalk, would it be the sidewalk like in front of Brothers or would it be all brick? Well, what, what the, um, the aesthetics and sidewalk committee, they looked at the town as it is and they said there were um, three zones, four zones, uh, that would be all brick that's existing right here in front of Town Hall. Um, the uh, uh, Bank of America, the Baxter Park is all brick, and in front of the church. And I would, that includes, I would think it continues in that area. It would be, I would think all brick, but that's why. And then the other areas would be like you see in front of the new Avenue restaurant and, and Brothers where you have the Is cement. Is that what it's called, the Avenue? The Avenue. Oh. And then you would have uh, the four rows of bricks. But either way, um, yeah, it's a, nice a mess look. down there on Ferry Street right now. It is, yeah. You have about three yeah. dead trees, and it's, it's just the gravel. Uh, you got a beautiful area. They've done some nice work with the, the Doherty Park and things at the end. Uh, and then you got this kind of mess along Ferry Street. Yeah, and that would okay. dress it up dramatically. Um, I, I did get a tour of the new restaurant, the Avenue, uh, this afternoon, as a matter of fact. It's beautiful inside. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to seat, I think he said, 120. Uh, there's also the, can, like an accordion wall, uh, a, a separate room for function. Okay. Yeah. There are, in the second and third floors, with beautiful views of the downtown. Excellent. Uh, they can have up to 14. Uh, a part, um, office areas up there, yeah, yeah. and some of them are very small with like suites of two or three, yeah. which is why they have so many, uh, but they will uh, custom make them. Hopefully, um, if they can get a business to take like uh, half the, sure. half the, uh, uh, the floor, they can do whatever they want. So they're looking at a mid-April uh, opening of the restaurant. Uh, it really looks very nice inside. I too went to uh, the PAC uh, 200 meeting, at least up through the pizza meal, and then I had to run, so I didn't miss the musician, uh, magician that was there. Uh, just a couple things, Mike, I just went by, and I know the uh, highway we moved it before, that beaver dam must be back at Bing's Pond, that's uh, it to flooded Ken big time. Barry Mandel came by yesterday when Ken was in the office, we talked to him about it of areas and then Ken called this morning and said why is it Barry Mandel shows up yeah. the beavers are everywhere <laughs> he He's said they them, huh? they've got a call up at the end of Colonial Road uh, they've okay, dammed yeah. up they've sure. dammed up down under Harding Street down by the railroad tracks uh, they uh, Bing's Pond is like flooded it's wet I've never seen it and we've had a lot of rain but yeah. it's way over clearly I think where it crosses under Harding Street I know they removed it once, they must be bad. Uh, yeah, it's, it, they've, they've removed it two or three times, and they just built about, I think, from what Barry said, I think this is this, around the time when they throw the young out and they have to go find new oh, great. dams. So um, that's why you're getting so much of this around this time, because before they have a new brood or whatever you call mm -hmm. beaver children, um, they throw the they throw the yearlings out, and they have to go fend for themselves. So is he looking at some of these? Because uh, this is costing us every time. Yeah, yeah, it's getting to be a big expense, and uh, uh, he can trap until April fifteenth, okay. uh, okay. under the state existing law. After that, he needs to get a ten day permit from the board of health uh, to so do any we trapping. Have the highway demolish the dam, and then he's trapping. Or? Highway, uh, it, it, generally what they've been doing is they've been plugging up culverts. So a highway will go in and clean out clean the culvert. The okay. And he tries to trap, uh, but, you know, he hasn't, I don't think he's been getting a lot, trapping a lot. It, he said that they weren't around all, all winter, but now that the, there's no ice, they seem to be coming out yeah. because it's usually it's later when they come out, but because mm -hmm. of the... Uh, Relatively mild weather, they seem to be starting earlier. Like crocuses are around. Building season started early. Yeah. Okay. So we are aware of it. Okay. We're trying to keep up with it. It is a ongoing I, I, problem. I, I'm pretty sure it's the culvert at uh, Bing's Pond and Hiding Street. They could do that. 
That's one of the ones that, that's one of the ones they've already cleared out okay. twice. So I went by today, it was real hard. Yeah. Um, and one last thing, uh, were we able to get uh, Dave Maxson to get a letter to the uh, South Tower folks on the Water Tower? No, we're, we're going to put out specs on that. That's what we're doing Great. on that, yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Anything else to come before the board? Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, all favor, aye. The preceding was a production of Medfield TV.